Hey there, I'm Scott from Tringable Studios and it's an honor to be here on the Produce Like a Pro YouTube channel today. I'm going to show you guys how to program some metal drums, specifically uh, a blast beat or two. Eh? Let's check it out. Here's the song we're going to work on. It's just a couple of riffs that I'm actually working on for a song. Thought I would just go ahead and put some scratch tracks of guitars and hey, let's do it live. So the best way to demonstrate this with some guitars and bass. So I've done just that. I have a couple of riffs that I'm working on. I go, I went ahead and just threw some scratch recordings of them in here real quick. And what better way to demonstrate some metal drums with some metal guitar riffs. So let's check out what we're going to do. So a pretty good idea what the song sounds like. It is mid-pace, so we will need to keep in mind that some note length values and stuff just won't work because they're either too slow or they just won't make sense. And it seems to be also in a straight time feel, so we'll be sticking with straight notes. Might use some triplets for some fills. But let's open up the piano roll here. I'm all ready to go here. I got the drum map loaded. And like I say, you know, I do reference things that I cover extensively in drum programming mastery. I talk about drum maps, how to create them, why there are no industry standard drum maps, all these things I discuss. Just in this video, I really want to prove to you that drum programming is a musical and creative process. Now, I know that, that like there's the technical side here that we're going to talk about, like actually putting the notes on the grid. That's the vehicle to express your creativity. And with the shortcuts I'm going to show you and with the tools that I'm going to use here, uh, I, I, if I was not explaining what I'm doing right now, I would have this, these riffs mocked up within a minute or two maximum. That, I mean, that's how fast now that I can program drums. And you will be able to do the exact same thing because I'm going to show it to you. All right, so there's a couple things we need to have open. We need to have the event properties open. So it's Control F2. We need to have this really cool Lua script. All right, uh, you find this with the RIA pack. It's called the MIDI note selector. Download, and it works fantastically. I'll show you why in just a second. All right, so let's get started now. How do we want the song to start? So let's just do a classic metal trick uh, and start off with a blast beat. So I, we have two things that we could do here. We could do a traditional Euro blast, which is alternating between kick, snare, kick, snare, kick, snare. Or I'm thinking we might be able to get away with a bomb or cannibal blast, which would be the double bass and then the snare on the downbeat. Um, we can try both. It's very simple and easy to do, and we can do it quickly. So let's do the bomb blast first. So the bomb blast, let's do four measures. Um, in Reaper, you can split notes to whatever the grid length is so i'll select 16th note and i have a hot key for that action split note on grid and now we have all our double bass it gets better because i can do the exact same thing with snare change this back to eighth notes hit x i have a bomb blast in four mouse clicks so it's a bit Mid tempo, it's, it's almost like Cannibal Corpse. They'd like to do a lot of uh, this kind of tempo type stuff. It sounds pretty good, but let's go ahead and uh, try out the Euro Blast straight away, too. So we'll do the same thing. We'll draw a big long note here that goes four bars. Now, traditional blasts go kick, snare, kick, snare, kick, snare. So we can basically do the exact same thing here. We can make a row of double bass in the correct note length. Now we can use our MIDI note selector, which would be select every second note, starting from the second note. We click go, and voila, 
we have every second note selected. I hit up twice on my number pad on my keyboard. You could also use control, arrow key up. There, okay? Look how simple that was. It's easy. It's easy and fast. So you can be creative again, all right? You can, you can spend more time experimenting with drum beats and seeing what works instead of click, 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 click. All right, it's, it's uh, frankly amazing. So let's see which one we like best here. So either the, the bomb or the traditional one. So I'm going to go for the traditional blast because, I mean, this song is, that's a black metal riff. Come on. We got to be honest. So what I'm going to do is I have a quick, uh, I have a custom macro for quickly copying things right to the next, following the next item. I'll hit V and it'll show up immediately. Let's just, okay. Let's just uh, zoom out here and I can hit left arrow like that. That's awesome because I'm zoomed out, right? Like, I can't click and drag that. I can just hit the arrow keys. Look how fast that is. Yeah. And it goes by the denomination of the grid setting. So, look. I'm moving in 16th notes, basically, but it's snapping to eighths. So, if I'm at 16th, right? Zoom in. I'm literally going by a 16th note. 32nd going by a 32nd. Okay, so this is fantastic. We can zoom on out. And I know I can just go like this and I can just go there, boom. And I'm on the grig, I'm on time and I know it's good. So, I mean, that... Change absolutely calls for a different type of drum beat. And I am super feeling double bass. We're going to do the exact same thing. So all I got to do is draw a line like this. Hit X. I got double bass. Wow. But let's do it in the right note length. Let's do 16th notes. So look, I, look, I could even do it on purpose. I'll undo that. I'll go back to 8th notes. I'll hit X. Be like, oops, control Z. Done. I'm just using shift and mouse wheel to change my grid setting without having to click anything. That's also another custom action you gotta download. I show, all, listen, I show all of these things in Drum Programming Mastery. So if you got Reaper and you wanna program drums faster, okay, here you go. All right, so we got the double bass. You know, I'm really feeling just like a straight old ACDC 2-4 would be good here. All right, so this whammy bar dive absolutely needs to be some type of a fill here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put snare here. I'm just, it's basically telling myself this needs to be a fill. So I don't, I don't forget or miss it. So I feel like I want the energy of the song to be, you know, we need to pick it up, but I don't necessarily think a blast beat would work here. See, I want to bob my head on the beat, so I think we're just going to do a snare, like that. So this could be a fill, right? We could do, we could come into a fill here, and then we could probably call back to the tr traditional blast beat that we did, yeah? And then we would basically have a mock-up of the song. Awesome. So that's step one. I just completed the first step of a five-step process. We already have a really good idea what the song sounds like. Yeah, so let's continue. So, hey, let's start filling in the blanks a little bit. Let's add some symbols 
and fills. All right, so I love to do um, traditional blast beats with uh, the eighth note kick pattern, meaning that I like to have the right hand and the right kick hit at the same time, and I forego the cymbal hitting with both the kick and the snare. I just feel it grooves better. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get my trusty ride cymbal, and we're going to do the exact same thing. Rag bow, draw a big long note. Hit X. Oh, so now this is not the actually this would be this might actually be yeah. Let's just change this to 115. Hit apply. It stays. Okay. And now we have our ride. So the ride is hitting with the kick. So we get we get a pattern here. Now the really to accentuate this pattern, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the rag bell now. And basically every other note. So we can go like this. And we go to bell. Come on. Oops. I messed up a little bit. Let's start from here. Because when we do it from here and we select every other note, we get on the beat the one that we want. Great. Let's do that one too. Actually, this will probably be a symbol of some kind. So let's do... A crash symbol. Now I love using crash symbols to follow the rhythm guitars. So I'm going to do exactly that right now. So we're going to do a small fill here. And we can just basically use the ride symbol. In between the crashes. Obviously we can't do that. And we'll leave this crash open. So we'll do what we'll do is we'll go a ride symbol for this crash. And then when we hit this crash, we'll do hi hat. Hi hats are up here. Let's do shake. Nice. So this makes sense because we're following the ergonomics of what the right hand would be doing. So if we go crash here, here's the rag. We go crash over here, here's the hi-hat. Crash over here, here's the rag. So we follow the ergonomics of the kit. I talk about all that in uh, my course as well, like how the hands move, sticking patterns. Where the hands are going to be at any one time during a rudiment, a paradiddle, a uh, double stroke, uh, rudiments, all these things I talk about in detail. Yeah, great. Awesome. Now, we can just copy this on over because we're mocking everything up here. And let's do, instead of the the... Oops, let's do instead of the ride some, we're going to move it over to the hi-hat. Moving it over to the hi-hat is a great way to change the dynamics of the song. Um, and instead of, instead of this China, let's make that, or set, excuse me, instead of a crash, let's, like, let's make this a China. So we don't have the same thing going on here, so it's not a big deal that we're essentially not copying, but we're reusing the same idea. Familiarity is good, okay? Keeping things simple and familiar is exactly what people are going to like about your song. So we can do the same thing here, crash. We'll do crash left. We'll delete this hi-hat because this is gonna be a crash symbol on the other side of the drum kit. We need to do hand travel time. It makes it sound more realistic. I like it. Um, I like having that in both instances. I think it sounds better. Okay, this is big powerful here. I think we need to do two crash symbols, absolutely. 
two crash hits. And we're going to do a China down here with the snare. And then we're going to do, I love using um, the ride symbol with double bass. So let's do that. So ride bow. And what's going to happen is we will... Yeah, awesome. So we'll do that. These are going to be eighth notes. Split on the grid. This will probably be a China or a crash symbol section. So let's uh, let's do crash first. So even when you do crash sections like this, it's still important to vary it up. You can do this, for example. And these small differences make a huge uh, impact on your song. And then here, we could go, instead of here, we're going to go with China. Now, China's on the right side of the kit. So we can, we're doing the same pattern with the hands. And see how nice it is where uh, I can spend time actually talking to you and explaining this process and actually just flying through this. Look how much I've done. It's, this process is so much easier now because technically it's easier to record, or not record, to write drum parts. Especially, you know, when you have knowledge of what it's like to think like a drummer and how a drummer would play, which I talk about. Awesome. Continue. You know, I like that whole section, actually. I think it's really cool. You know, there's no rule written anywhere that says drums need to be um, ridiculously complicated. Drums just need to move the song forward and need to be energetic. All right, this is a fill. We need to get to that. And then and we can come back here and we can sort of see what we did. So this will work. We'll still be able to use the same pattern. Now the ride bell is so important in getting the part where people need to move their head. So we can do, I'm hearing things right away. I can just change it. Awesome, but let's do a right hand first. And then we will do... Oop, I did mess up a little bit. We'll bring this on down. Great, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna leave the hand travel time here. Da da da. I think it would sound really good here. Ba ba ba. So we're gonna do no snares here, perhaps. This should sound pretty cool. Nice. Two Chinas right here. Cool. Oh, this is so energetic. I'm, I'm really happy with this. 
Nice. Okay. So that was step two. Step three now, we need to fine-tune all this. And this really means that we need to especially take care of the hi-hats. Now, the video is getting a little long on the tooth, so let's just talk about hi-hats really quick to show you guys what I'm talking about. This is a, a big problem uh, with, well, it used to be with, but in the past, but hi-hats even today. You can just hear it. They sound very mechanical. It's very easy to spot that they are a problem. So we need to find the pulse of the song. So I'm going to guess that the pulse of the song is maybe something like... So it's going to be like this. So we're going to pulse on basically every downbeat like this. Yeah. So we do that, we do that, and then... It's not just as simple. Why don't I take that? It's not just as simple as bringing the velocity down on these. We need to change the articulation. That's what I'm going to do. And then we bring all these down even further in velocity. So it's like 95 maybe. Then we'll do 92, 105 for perhaps. Apply and let's see what the hi hats sound like now. Nice, getting getting there. Let's see if we can move these up all together. So, just for the sake of argument, let's cut all these out so you can hear the hi hats. You got the pulse. You can totally feel the pulse. Let's bring it back. So that's a crucial component of making drum song real. Same thing with, with the ride cymbal here. We can do the exact same thing. So what we can do is the ride cymbal is going to pulse on the downbeats. So we just kind of basically do the exact same thing. Okay, and this is now where we, we can get in. We already have the drums written, right? So we're not really cared about writing the drums or coming up with new ideas. Now this is really where we make them come alive. So we can bring these down. What do we got? One, let's go 87, perhaps. All right, so there we go. But we have this middle note here, right? You want to click all those? No, we can use our note selector. So we go to our note selector. We will want to select, uh, wait a minute, we're going to start on the third note. One, two, three. We we'll start on the third note, but we need to select every one, two, three, fourth. So we need to select every fourth note because we want to select the note in between this. So we click go. Boom, shakalaka. There we go. Uh, and now let's bring those velocities down another 10 points, perhaps. And here we are. Oh, we got some pulsating here. And I'll do the same thing. I'll take out the drums here so we can listen. And it would be even more apparent if there was a bell here, which we could put in later. But yeah, it's that's so important to doing uh, uh, program drums. I think the last thing I want to show you before I jump off here and give Warren his channel back is just how important it is to do a double bass. So let's, we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to grab this and we're going to select every other note, okay? Starting with the second note. Oop. And we're going to bring it down to the next channel because we got a kick and we got a kick double. So now they're on two different kick drums, right? So this is the left foot, yeah? This is the right foot. Uh, I'm sorry. This is the right foot, and this is the left foot. I'm right-handed, right-footed. Left foot is non-dominant. So left foot needs to come down. Actually, bring these both down because these are both way too loud. 115 is usually the key. 
bring this down to oh yay 95 and we should have much better uh double kicks Maybe we can break them down even more, just a little bit. Yeah. And if we were to maybe humanize them a touch. Simple, easy. One last thing. Uh, I know I just said the double bass was the last thing, but it's not. I forgot. I want to show you something. With sample drums, snare notwithstanding, sometimes they're just, you know, you want to put some extra life into them. You can do that with trigger. Okay, when you do multiple output routing like this, like the snare is going to its own channel, you can see that it's, it's basically creating an audio signal. And in Reaper, you can create a new track, which I've just done here. I just call it snare fat. All I did was I inserted slate trigger on here. <clears throat> and I put one of my favorite samples to use, which literally fattens up the snare. It's called fatten up snare. I mean, you know, it fattens up the snare. And it sounds like, let me just show you what it sounds like. Fatten up the snare. That's what it sounds like. So it's just tub. We want to add some tub to our snare. Because without it, our snare sounds a bit thin. But we put the sample in with it. It just adds the extra dynamic quality. And then when you run this through a bus compress compressor, for example, you're just getting those extra dynamics and characteristics in your snare that helps just fill it up a little, little, little bit. I mean, you could do EQ as well. You could throw on some, uh, where is my Pro Q? Pro Q. Here we go. Pro Q. Great. So uh, that is, I promise. That's it. I gotta go because Warren's gonna kill me. All right. All right. Okay. So I really hope you enjoy going a bit in depth on what it's like to write drums. And I hope you really understand now that with just a couple of simple tools and showing you guys how to use these tools, that drum programming really is a musical and creative process. And in the course, I know I've referenced it a bunch of times, but please just one last time. I literally talk about everything. You want to know how to think like a drummer? I tell you, I am one. I tell you what I'm thinking when I write songs. So I was thinking about drum parts, how I approach songwriting, what I was thinking about, how I learned new fills, how I tried to be more creative on the drums, okay? You want to be more creative as a non-drummer? I explain and make a full video how you can go and become more creative, what you can do, things that you can do actively from right now, two seconds ago, to be more creative on the drums. I talk about mistakes. I talk about rudiments, how to program, how to program all the major blast beats, how to program skank beats, everything that you saw here, those, that was like a really quick version of the five-step process because I do a entire song live from nothing to end. And you get to see every single note that I put in and I use the same techniques. All right. So you're going to see absolutely everything. It's over 11 hours long. There's a bunch of information on what it's like to be a drummer, to think like a drummer. And I'm just imparting all that knowledge onto you. So if you're a non-drummer and you're a guitarist and you're struggling, metal drum programming might be exactly what you're looking for. So go ahead, check the description below. I'm sure the link is there. Uh, leave a comment if you join up and let me know what you think. I'd be very curious to hear your thoughts. All right. So thanks to Warren and Produce Like a Pro. I'm going to, I forget what he always says. He's always like, Aviza Zane, you said something in French, I think. I can't do that. How about this? I'll do the outro in Russian. Спасибо вам большое. Я все, я ушел. Всем до свидания. Пока.